Hello, my name is Derek Butler, and I'm the Executive Director of the Association of Seafood Producers in St. John's, Newfoundland, and I'm pleased to provide this industry resource perspective uh, from the province, a, a virtual seminar for the digital marketplace in lieu of the North Atlantic Fish and Work Boat Show this year, which has been postponed to next year. So what I'd like to do is present just a little bit about uh, ASP and who we are, and then talk about uh, the resource that we see, the resource prospects in the short term. And I've confined myself to the short term because that's what we know best. We can always tell what the weather might be tomorrow better than we can in a couple of weeks. So when I say short term, I'm looking at uh, two to three years out, maybe five years out, in respect to the various resources from the main species function groups that we avail ourselves of here in the province. So first, just a little bit about the Association of Seafood Producers. We are a typical industry trade association that works for the interest of seafood producers in the province. We negotiate fish raw material prices on the wharf on behalf of our members in a collective bargaining regime, a formal regime instituted by legislation. We provide input into policy decisions, regulatory matters at all levels of government, federal and provincial principally, but as a municipal as well on occasion. We participate in programs of direct benefit to the whole industry, such as the Marine Stewardship Council, fisheries improvement programs, etc. And generally, I think, work for the betterment of the industry generally. So that is a little bit about what ASP does. We were founded in 2004, so we've been in existence now for uh, 16 years. And before I get into the resource prospects, let me just talk a little bit about the importance of sustainability, because sustainability is, as the old commercial used to say, a job one. Very pleased to say that ASP certified the first fishery in Canada, uh, cold water shrimp, and that it was actually the largest then certified cold water shrimp fishery in the world, and since then have certified a number of other fisheries. And I'm showing here fisheries in italics. Those are fisheries that are certified by existing ASP members in their own accord but ASP has also participated in the certification of the first three there, snow crab, cold water shrimp, and turbot Greenland halibut. We also participate in a number of fisheries improvement programs with industry partners, such as Northern Cod, Lobster, and our member producers in American Place and Witch Flounder. So if we don't take care of the fish, the fish can't take care of us. So job one is sustainability, and that underscores everything we say in respect to the resource. This next slide looks at the export value and volume. And if you look to the right, you can see on volume, snow crab at first in the list, uh, but cold water shrimp is the largest by volume. And then a little further on, number five is capelin. So it would be shrimp, capelin, and snow crab in order, in descending order. But when you look at the value, you see in the top 10, both of these are top 10 by value and volume. If you look to the left by value, you see snow crab um, a huge export value in respect to the industry in comparison to everything else, then cold water shrimp, and then lobster. So in 2019, for which we have the most recent data, about $877 million of export value, not including domestic value, obviously. So a significant business, and these would be the principal species that would be exported. The washed out graphic in the background taken from the Seafood Year in Review 2019 developed by the Provincial Fisheries Department. It provides just an overview. You can look at that. I have the link at the end of the presentation, and it provides details on the export markets that we go to. And when we look at the fish landings by species group, and we're going to look at this in a little bit more detail, you can see here the increasing value, which is good news, but a general decline in fish landings by species group. Uh, the first bar towards the bottom, or the darker blue, a decline in shellfish with some stability in 2018, 2019, and actually, actually some recovery in 2020. Uh, the next a lighter blue would be pelagics, and you can see the 2019 level is lower than the 2010 level. But some growth in the ground fish category, which is the blue color at the top or the greenish blue color at the top of each bar. And that, that proportion has increased slightly. And here we see shellfish, groundfish, and pelagics by value and volume. I've actually reversed them on the slide. It's volume and then value in the picture um, for 2019. And when you look at the volume, shellfish is 52% of all the volume. But when you look at the value in blue, it's 82% of the value. So shellfish is everything. 
And that's a good thing because shellfish has so shown, granted some decline since the highs of 20, 2009, 2010. Shellfish has shown some stability with growth in lobster, growth in crab in recent in the, in the last year or two with good prospects, uh, but but kind of flat of course on shrimp down substantially from 2009, 2010. Here we sort of delve into one species in particular, and this is snow crab. Snow crab, and well, it's queen crab, is king, ironically. So snow crab is everything. It's, it's the principal species, which represents most of the value, as we saw a little earlier on the export, uh, export figures. And you can see here in the blue or greenish blue bars, the decline in the volumes with some recovery in 2020, um, and the decline in commensurate the values were relatively stable even on declining volumes because the market was holding up, but this year, of course, was down. And these are landed values. Um, I think the prospects, it's fair to say, are good. Uh, the science in recent years, we wouldn't have said this a couple of years ago, but the science in recent years is showing that we have some reason to be cautiously optimistic in the short term of three to five years. We're down significantly from where we were, as I say, in the middle of the, the 2000s. But of late, we have got some, some, some reason for uh, optimism in respect to the future of a snow crab, which is a good news story. And the value is up significantly over prior years. Um, so that's very important because it carries such a preponderance of the value of the industry overall in just this one species. And if we go to lobster, for example, another species which the volumes are much lower, but you can see here the volumes have increased substantially which has resulted in the commensurate increase in values as well. And I think that's a good news story. It's the third most valuable species now in the province, second or third, and it's going to be an increasing value proposition. I think the prognosis here is optimistic or positive in terms of the resource uh, for lobster. So those are just two, lobster and crab, two of the most valuable species we have. Shrimp in the inshore sector has been in steep decline. It's been in decline in the offshore as well. I don't have a slide on it but we're down significantly from where we were in terms of volumes just a few years ago. Let's turn now to ground fish. But shellfish is most of the business, as we saw earlier, 82% of the value. But if we look at ground fish, you can see here in the gr greenish blue bars again, the volumes, relative stability, but growth since 2012, with a couple of years, you know, slightly back in 2018, up again in 2019. But a, a significant increase in the value proposition from 2012 onwards. Again, a little bit of retrenchment in 2018, up again slightly in 2019. And I think we would say that the resource uh, trajectory is positive, certainly from this figure and from what we know is happening with the resource, up in volume 5% 2019 over 2018. We've seen cod up a little and down a little, but up since 20, the mid 2000s, yellowtail flounder, redfish, strong redfish prospects in, in the Gulf. So I think the story on, on ground fish is, is in the short term, maybe to medium, I would have to say a positive story. If we go to pelagics, which is the next largest functional group for us, uh, on volume it's significant. We saw that earlier, 20 odd percent of the volume, but on value just, oh here's the figure, 26 percent, but on value just uh, 3 percent. And you can see the green, bluish green bars again um, with some retrenchment or decline in 2017, but a relatively stable picture since 2011, apart from that 2017 decline, with some increase again. And the value proposition is kind of tracking that as well. Um, I think if you look at the, the prognosis for the resource, it's, it's kind of stable in these numbers with a slight increase since 2017. Uh, mackerel is clearly on the lower side of things. I think we need new science there. We would say the same in respect of Capelin. We'd like to have new science on Capelin. Um, squid is clearly on the rise. There's been significant increases in squid in both the value proposition that it represents as well as landings. So though that's the picture. If you look at the functional groups, species groups, uh, shellfish, groundfish, and pelagics, I think there's room for some cautious optimism in the industry, even as we might have concerns within with respect to specific species. I would be remiss if I didn't include this slide, which is to talk about COVID 
19 and 2020, which was a harsh reality the industry had to face, not just in our province, but around the world. And it represented a huge learning curve. And I think it also, um, I think I, I could say that on behalf of the industry, and this would include the harvesting sector, I think people were more resilient and adaptive than we might have dared hope. And in a short period of time from March, when the season eventually opened, we were able to prosecute a fishery with no incidents. Uh, but the caution here that I have to add, or the caveat, is that 2020 is no guarantee for 2021. We never experienced a pandemic market before. If you had told us last fall we wouldn't have food service this year, we would have had a long, hard winter. If you had told us three years ago that in 2020 food service wouldn't be available to us, it would have been a difficult three years of getting ready. And we had six to seven weeks to get ready for that reality. And while market, uh, the market responded negatively in respect of most species, um, I think we got through it, and now we're preparing for 2021. Uh, but having said that, 2020 is no guarantee for 2021. We've never had a pandemic market, but we've also never experienced a post-pandemic market. But I think we have shown ourselves to be more resilient and capable than we otherwise might have thought in a difficult business. So that's it for my presentation. I want to thank you for your attention and for listening and viewing the slides. If you need any additional information, you can visit the link, seafoodproducers.org, for ASP, links to our members for product, as well as information, um, contact information if you have additional questions. For information and data from the Newfoundland uh, Department of Fisheries, Forestry, and Agriculture's uh, Seafood Year in Review for 2019, from which I lifted some of the graphics and data, uh, the link is provided for that as well, and that's a great document. Thanks to the department for that. Thank you very much.